Microsoft is one colossal step forward in acquiring Activision Blizzard after a recent ruling in the United States going against the FTC. Now, I am no legal expert by any means, but to my understanding, now it's only the UK standing in the way of this acquisition going through. And as I continue my recuperation from my hip injury, let's have a nice laid-back chill discussion about the possible implications a Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard may have for you, the consumer. Let's start first with the Xbox player perspective. Whether you play Xbox games on your console or on your PC. Now you may be asking, Jmalls, what benefit could the consumer have from one mega corporation acquiring another corporation? Well, it's a very good question. But the problem is, it's a bit of a nuanced debate. So let's talk about an Xbox player and what they may gain from this acquisition. Well, Xbox's main selling point right now is a couple of things. One, the games they have under their own umbrella on top of the Game Pass system. Now, what is Game Pass? Game Pass is a subscription-based service for Microsoft and Xbox where you pay a subscription fee, kind of like a streaming service, but it's not streaming, and you gain access to a catalog of games under the Game Pass umbrella that you can pick and choose and play at your own leisure and convenience. You're not paying separately for each of these titles. You can just pick and choose whichever game you want to play, so long as you're subscribed to the service. And if you are someone who likes to play a variety of games, then Game Pass has a lot of value to you as a consumer, where you can play a ton of different games over the course of your tenure with this subscription service for a fraction of the cost of what it would ordinarily cost you if you're going to buy these games individually. So it makes sense why a lot of Xbox or even PC players are excited about the idea of Xbox and Microsoft acquiring one of the largest gaming publishers in the entire world right now, Activision Blizzard. Why is that? Well, in all likelihood, the games that Activision Blizzard have would probably end up on the Game Pass. So all of a sudden, Game Pass becomes a far more tempting offer, or just a flat-out better offer if you are already on the service. Potentially getting access to games like Call of Duty, Diablo, StarCraft if they ever remember that franchise exists, and even potentially World of Warcraft. That one may be a bit tricky since it's an MMO, but that would be a very strong offer, on top of the games that are already under that catalog. Remember, the allure of Game Pass may not necessarily be the exclusives, it's the access to this entire catalog of games that fall under Game Pass. Because that is an extremely, extremely valuable proposition to a lot of people, and understandably so. So I'm not going to fault anyone who is excited about this, because they're going to probably end up getting access to even more games that they may fall in love with or already love. That just makes sense to me. However, unfortunately, as happens with a lot of video game discussions, a lot of the conversation surrounding this acquisition has kind of boiled down to a generic us versus them console wars argument, where it's either Xbox fanboys or PlayStation fanboys or whoever just throwing proverbial mud at each other to try and reassure themselves their own purchase, or when I guess notoriety on the internet, and to me, a lot of the times, these console wars arguments, they could be fun when done in a reasonable setting. I'm not going to be some kind of fun police that's just going to go around and say, don't be happy with your purchase, don't take joy out of the things you like. I'm not going to be like that. However, I do think it's important to have perspective on this situation. At the end of the day, Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, Activision Blizzard, they are all companies whose primary motivation is to make money. Your primary motivation as a consumer, in my opinion, should be to find the best value to you and to make the best purchases for games that entertain you personally. Whether you're a fan of Mario games, Zelda games, God of War, FromSoft games, Halo, Spider-Man, Final Fantasy, whatever. Your goal as a consumer should not be the welfare of these massive companies. It should be your own. And you should engage in smart consumer practices so that you get the most bang for your buck and the most joyous experiences for you. We all like different styles of games. We all like different genres. We, are, we all have our own personal interests and opinions, and that's fine. That's what makes the industry so fun and entertaining, in my opinion. And what makes 
video game discussion so interesting and fascinating and just fun for me. I love talking about stuff like this, because we all have our own different opinions and perspectives. But to me, it's important not to treat these companies and these consoles or plastic boxes as if they're your local sports team. It's not like a Red Sox versus Yankees game here, people, where you gotta root for the hometown team, even when they're down and out. No. Look out for number one. Look out for you and look out for your fellow consumers. That doesn't mean you have to be a fun police. That doesn't mean you have to go around telling people who are having a joyous experience or even people who may benefit from this acquisition that they shouldn't have fun with these games. No. Have fun with them. Enjoy them. Video games are awesome. Be engaged with your product. Have a good time with them. But just don't forget that the primary motivation for these companies is to make money. It is not to necessarily entertain you. Entertaining you is a way they can make money. But in my opinion, in this world, intention matters. And a lot of decisions that companies make make a lot more sense when you view it through the perspective of how does this make them as much money as is humanly possible. Why would Microsoft want to acquire Activision Blizzard? Well, I can think of a few things. Activision Blizzard games are very popular, so having the rights to those games puts Microsoft in a better position to advertise their platform. That makes sense. It also makes the Game Pass a more valuable offer and proposal to other consumers. Imagine how alluring it may be to a lot of people to say, hey, if you want to play World of Warcraft, just sign up for Game Pass, we'll cover your subscription cost for you. Like, imagine they went with something like that. Just think about it for a second. How crazy of an offer that could be. Will you get access to World of Warcraft, one of the most renowned games of all time? Sure, I may not be a fan of it anymore, but a lot of people are. But you get that game on top of the entire rest of the catalog that is in Game Pass? That's a very, very alluring offer. Understandably so. But we have also been down this road before where Microsoft says they will keep games multi-platform and then make them exclusive. Cough, cough, Starfield. Now, if they acquire Activision Blizzard, I think that would be within their right. I'm not entirely sure about the licensing of it all or previous deals and how they would take into effect. Again, I'm not a legal expert. And yes, I fully believe that if Sony was in this position, they would do the exact same thing because it's the smart business practice to do. Unless they run a cost analysis where it turns out keeping these games multi-platform actually makes Microsoft more money based on the cut they get from a whole new player base of people. Maybe that's a thing. I don't know the math on that one, but I imagine Microsoft and or Sony are doing that math and those analyses behind the scenes. I imagine that's what they're doing. But have some empathy for your fellow consumers. We can acknowledge that certain games would not exist without exclusivity because they need that initial investment to get off the ground. We can understand that. We can accept that's a reality of the situation. However, my personal preference is for games to be multi-platform whenever possible because... I want people to have access to these games and these experiences so they can have access to these games and play them. One of my favorite, if not my favorite video game series of all time is Xenoblade Chronicles. I would love that franchise to be multi-platform so that people on Xbox or PlayStation or PC have access to one of my favorite franchises of all time so that they can play the games themselves if they don't own a Switch, for whatever reason, I'm not going to judge anybody. Anybody. We all have our own different perspectives, opinions, and preferences. But to me, I want people to have access to the games that I love because I want to be able to share in those experiences with others or with more people. I don't like the idea of someone being limited in the terms of the offerings of the games they can play just because of some decision they made in regards to which plastic box they wanted to buy for whatever reason, whether their friends were on one system System, or the system just happened to have a few too many exclusives that were tempting to them. Sure, it was a decision that people made, but at the same time, I'm just saying, in my opinion, from my perspective, my preference would be games to be multi-platform whenever possible so that more people had access to these games 
so that they could play them. Final Fantasy 16 is almost certainly going to end up being my game of the year for 2023. I freaking wish the game was multi-platform, because I wish more people had access to play that game, because I think it's a genuinely fantastic product. And it did disappoint me when I found out that it was going to be a PS5 exclusive. I'm not the type of person to take joy in the idea that, hey, since I have a PS5 and others don't, I'm glad other people won't be able to enjoy Final Fantasy 16. That's just not the type of person that I am. I would rather the game to be multi-platform like Final Fantasy 15 was, so that more people have access to that experience. I would love Halo to be multi-platform as well. I was a PlayStation kid growing up. I loved Halo though, and not having access to Halo just sucked for me. Sure, I eventually went over to Xbox, but still, it is my preference that people have access to as many games as they can have access to. Not saying all the games have to be free or anything, but exclusivity is kind of a reality of the industry we kind of have to manage with right now just because of the economics of the industry. Each console, Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, have to advertise to the consumer that their plastic box is worth picking up. And how do you advertise that? Well, you could be like Nintendo Switch and say, hey, we don't just double, we, do, we aren't just a console. You can take the Switch out of the docket and all of a sudden you have a portable device with you. That is inherent value to the consumer. You could be like Xbox where you say, hey, we have Game Pass. So even if you don't care about our exclusives, we have a bunch of other games at a very reasonable price that you could have access to on a subscription basis. That has value to it. PlayStation is trying to find their own niche with the PlayStation VR. That's not really doing it for them. They have things like PS Now and PS Plus and all that. But the big heavy hitter for PlayStation right now is, hey, look at all these exclusives we have. Spider-Man, God of War, Final Fantasy 16. Look at all of what we have. So I think a couple of things can be true at the same time. We can acknowledge the realities of the industry, but also I can still advocate for the idea that I wish more games were multi-platform so that we don't end up in a situation where someone may miss out on one of their favorite games of all time just because it happens to be on another console. I think it's very important to be a realist when it comes to observing the landscape of the video game industry and recognizing that these corporations aren't doing this out of the kindness of their heart. They are doing this because in their mind, it makes them more money. And yes, Sony would absolutely do the same thing in my opinion. They were working deals with Activision for years to get PlayStation various benefits when it came to Call of Duty for years up to this point compared to Xbox. But I don't think two wrongs make a right. And we can acknowledge that for certain players, this will probably end up giving certain players more value for their money because Game Pass is going to become an even more alluring offer with more titles supported on the subscription service. However, we can also acknowledge that this is consolidating a lot of companies and a lot of franchises under Microsoft. And a lot of the times when it comes to discussions like these, we can get hang up on the verbiage or hung up on the specific words being used, like a monopoly, for instance. That is a word that is being thrown around a lot right now. Whereas I feel the conversation is being too focused on the wording rather than the spirit of the debate. If this trend continues, Microsoft can outspend the competition. It's Microsoft, right? When we are just focusing on the games, yes, the Nintendo Switch has sold more. Yes, PlayStation has sold more, but it's still Microsoft. If they want to outspend you, they damn well can. It's only a matter of if they want to. So in my opinion, be smart consumers. Look for the best deals for you. Don't get hung up on the console war BS that gets popularized a lot of the times when it comes to discussions like these. Engage in smart consumer practices and understand the reality of the situation. These are all companies looking to make the most money. And whether you think that is right or wrong, that's not the topic of conversation. Just understand, though, that's the reality of the situation right now. These aren't hometown team sports debates. These are companies looking to make more money. So I'm gonna call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really ups the channel out and helps support future content. And leave a comment down below with what platform you primarily play on, whether it's console, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, PC, and how you feel about this potential acquisition of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft. 
I would love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions and hear your perspectives. So stay safe, have a great day, go play some video games if you can, and as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.